everybody. Welcome to my suburban oasis. My name is Soleil and I garden in a zone 6A in Mid Michigan and we're going to be taking our tour and walk about today and it is the evening and I can hear the crickets out. So I think you're going to hear more of those perhaps if you can rather than birds tonight because it's very still and quiet and we're about to get warmer weather soon. So looking forward to hopefully having my tomatoes ripen up and maybe continuing to get some really nice late summer blooms. So right now we are standing near the pool and we are standing near the fountain and our gorgeous Incredibles have turned that nice limey color and they're just holding up really well because we haven't gotten a heat wave. Just some very slight browning on the tips, but overall they look wonderful. And you can see back behind them we have a hibiscus in full bloom as well. Now I don't have the fountain on. I did get it cleaned, but we've had so much rain um, that if I run the fountain right now, I'll be overwatering some of the plants that are around it. So I'm kind of avoiding that right now. You can actually see some of the browning that's happened on the azalea that's right down over here in the corner. But other than that, the rest of the shrubs that are around it are doing magnificently. The nice cool weather has definitely done some really nice things for the garden. In fact, you can see the spireas are starting to bloom again here. This is the superstar spirea and they bloomed in the spring and then I gave them a nice cut back and they are putting on some nice buds again. You can see we've got some blooms that are starting to open up on the all the rage rose here, which I just love this color and it has a nice scent too. It's also been wonderful for the pollinators because I will tell you that it is like a single rose and so they find a really nice easy way to get into the center of the rose and at the pollen. Aren't those a gorgeous blazing color? I would have called it all a blazing sunset or something but we have some gorgeous views over here right now just towards the end of the Millennium Allium bloom time so we'll probably see the end of that at oh probably next week but I want to show you the berry white hydrangea right now because it is such a nice deep rich saturated color this one probably blooms the the deepest color of all of the ones that I have and I just love it I did have to trim off some of the larger bloom heads on that but it's okay because it still has a lot on it now I did come through and actually do a little bit of pruning on my topiaries. So these Arborvitae topiaries are looking really nice and trimmed up and they're almost a perp perfect sphere now and I'm really enjoying having them in the garden. So if I had not topiaried them, they would be just eventually as tall as this one over here. But instead, I'm keeping them nice and small so that they can fit within my landscape. So just a wonderful way to bring some large specimens into your garden and be able to keep them at a size that your garden can really handle. Well, I'm loving the look of the quick fire right now because it's beautiful. It's also colored completely at this point. And a few years ago when I first planted the Japanese maple, I thought how beautiful it would be when those two mingled. And just look at that, the two colors there. You wouldn't necessarily think that those would go well together, but in the garden and in nature, anything's possible. And just look down at the long border from this direction. Lots of color and beauty. Things are deepening in their color. We're getting some gorgeous blooms on some of the sedum that I have along the edge of the rock border here. So there's just these small details everywhere. We have some small ones down in here and along the edge here. They just ensure that we get blooms all throughout the season. Even the limelight's picking up some pink tonality at, at this point. We've had some nights that have actually gotten below 50 degrees, you guys, so it has been quite cool. Really nice for sleeping, and uh, definitely the plants have a chance to recover from any heat of the day, but we haven't had any heat of the day for them to recover from, really. 
We've gotten some nice rebloom on the salvias right here, which are the violet riot variety. And I think they look really nice at the base of these limoncello barberries. Definitely have gotten some nice fresh new growth on this viburnum and I can't wait for next year because I think it's going to be really gorgeous. Hopefully we'll get lots of beautiful blooms on it next year. This part of the long border has all sorts of different colors in it. Here's the topiary down here looking really nice and trimmed up. And our budlia is really colorful now. This is the pugster blue. It's definitely a little bit more purpley and uh, the fragrance is really quite delightful as well. Our rose over here is looking beautiful in its white color with the geraniums and the firelight. Isn't that gorgeous? I love that combination there. And the deep tones of this rouge, diamond rouge hydrangea. You can see down this direction, we are just full of color still. And those flocks that we left alone last week, instead of cutting them down, we just left them. And they are really, really blooming despite the powdery mildew. This is a firelight hydrangea here with the beautiful colors on that. And probably, I'm hoping this week to get to cutting down this um, tree. We'll see if we get around to it or not. But look at the beautiful blooms on this phlox. I believe this is the Laura phlox. It smells delicious as well. And the papery blooms of this candu hydrangea could be harvested now if we wanted to dry them for something in the winter time or some kind of arrangement. They're really beautiful. Our little hottie hydrangeas are still looking good. They haven't put on any pink color like many of the other hydrangeas in the garden right now, but that's okay. The ferns and the grasses along here bring such a wonderful green tonal relaxation to the garden. The path has become really strong with the Virginia right here. I can probably divide some of this this year. And you can see it almost dead ends, <laughs> this path does, where we have the Hakona Chloa grass and the Summon Substance Hosta here growing into each other. So we'll have to take care of that soon. And then look at the Pinky Winky Hydrangea. This is a standard and it looks beautiful right now. It has some really pink tips, or white tips, excuse me, and then it deepens into that pink color. So pretty. And our petunias are getting a little bit overgrown. I am definitely starting to think about fall planters here and what we might do in these end planters because even the bog rosemary is getting a little bit tired of the amount of rain that it's getting. Ooh, I hear some mosquitoes in my ear. The privet hedge still looks good from our pruning last week, so I'm happy about that. It didn't have any sun damage or anything like that. We did it at a good time, weather-wise. And this corner looks lovely. Let's kind of back up so I can show you what this whole edge looks like here because I think it looks gorgeous all together. We have the repeating hues of the purple plum tree and the nine bark. And then we have the lime of the hydrangeas and the pink diamond hydrangea. And then that really nice upright habit of the arborvitas. I get a lot of questions about what those are. Those are the emerald green variety. So that's what we have there. And the overgrown potager. 
But just look at that alyssum. It's so gorgeous, you guys. I know I showed you it earlier this week, but it's still going. Just lovely. Now this pinky winky is really looking good. I'm excited that this has started to fill out and it's really beginning to cover up the heat pump that's behind it for our pool. The little limes over here are even turning color. Let's take a look out here in the front. So our spirea has really shot up. I think after it blooms next year, I'll probably give it a little bit of a trim back just to help make it bushy, bush up a little bit more or thicken out. And we have some hyliniums that are coming out right now that are blooming. Some nice fall yellow color. I'm loving this elderberry and its growth habit right now. It's getting really big, but it's so cool looking. So I'll definitely be trimming that back after it blooms next year as well a bit, but I love the growth habit on it and it should continue like that. We have lots of mums over here, you guys. Look at these mums, aren't they pretty? I know it's not even September yet, but we've got them. They're such a nice, beautiful, deep, dark color and they look great against the St. John's wort. I'm hoping to see some berries on this plant this year after all of the blooms we had. And this Verbena bonariensis is just stunning and continuing to bloom on. Our blue corner is gorgeous and happy. I did add a little bit of compost around one of the uh, grasses here because it was leaning over because we got such strong wind. You can see the lavenders are beginning to bloom. We don't have a lot behind it for the contrast, so it's kind of hard to see, I think, those lavender blooms, but they're there. Really pretty, that's the Hidcoat Lavender. And I'm planning to take this tree off the stake. I think it's gonna do just fine. I'm waiting just a little bit longer, probably until it loses its leaves this year, just to help with um, the wind, but I think it's gonna be just fine on its own. The Sonic Bloom Wygela over here continues to bloom. And we have so many baby leaves on my oak leaf hydrangea that are coming out so that we're going to be having more stems and more branching, more branching on this. So that is really exciting. That'll turn into much more of a shrub look next year. It's put on a lot of growth for its first year in the garden. I got it as a very, very small plant last fall. Now I started to do some deadheading on one of the daisies over here. And then it started to rain on me because that's been kind of my life the last few weeks. Um, I try to garden and it rains. Um, but you can see back here, some of the oregano is growing through the bobo hydrangeas. And isn't that a cute combination? You can even see it along this one over here as well as it pokes through. And then we have all of the mums that are starting to bloom as well. Just a beautiful combo right there. Look at this. Oregano and mums and bobo. I would never have planted that as a combo, but it just happened to be. I love it. Lots of coneflowers still, and we're seeing lots of uh, goldfinches now as the coneflowers turn to seed and put on their seed heads. And we're starting to see that with the autumn joys as well here on the front of this border. Isn't that pretty? Somebody asked me why I was going to be taking out these viburnums and just kind of as a reminder for those of you who may have joined more recently, these two viburnums are blue muffins and they have um, 
by Burnham beetle and it can really decimate them. It did that in the spring and then it came back with lots of vigorous growth from the rain, but you can see they're being decimated again. You can just see all of the damage on it. So I'll have to take these completely out because there's not much that I can do about that. I'm not into applying systemic insecticides or anything like that. So um, I don't wanna have to do that kind of thing on a regular basis. So I'll be taking those out. It's unfortunate because they're just the size and shape that I wanted in this garden bed, but we'll find something else that's even better. So we have some penstemon that are blooming down here and in amongst the cone flowers and the alliums. And you can see the Belisa pink gara here. Looking really beautiful and dramatic. And then this garden bed is really kind of starting to take on a fall vibe, I think because of all of the mums that are kind of back here, as well as the blooming of the grasses and the flocks. And I wanna show you my firelight over here really quick as well, because it's looking beautiful up against our window. And I just, I'm so lucky to be able to look out the window and see some of these things. But there it is back there, looking beautiful and so colorful. It's almost the same color as the berry white, which is so dramatic, but this one doesn't get quite as large, so that's nice. I hope to prune that one more into a tree form just so that um, I can see through it in the winter time as it gets bigger. You can see I have a volunteer Japanese maple right here that's growing through the maidenhair fern. And hopefully, I'll be digging that out soon and giving that to my sister. Our little umbrella pine is doing great and we're going to be planting that one out soon. I have a spot in mind for it. Just love this little guy. Also wanting to plant out that lavender. I still haven't gotten around to that either, but it looks beautiful. It's just bloom, bloom, blooming. And everything up against the house here is looking great. We still have some real good growth on everything. And um, we're getting some really good grow back from when the deer got the uh, impatience the other day. So things are growing back. And it's almost time for us to be taking in our amaryllis bulbs but probably in September is when that will happen. So not too far away, just a few more weeks outside and then I'll be bringing them in and putting them in a dark spot in the basement to overwinter. And then I'll pull them out in about right around Christmas time, maybe a little bit before and hopefully get some blooms on them. Well, thank you everyone for joining me today on this garden tour and walkabout. I hope you enjoyed it very much and enjoyed a cup of coffee or tea or your favorite beverage with it because I know it can be a very relaxing thing to sit down and just enjoy a garden tour. I know I enjoy it, so I hope you did too. We'll see you next time.